Hello guys, it's me Sim Urohara and in this video we'll discuss the most important events that occurred in episode 14 of the second season of Bleach anime. So for me this episode is one of the most amazing episodes that I watched in Bleach anime in general, both the first and the second season. Rather, I find it much better than the episodes of the first part of the second season in many aspects. As for quality, there is a great development between the first and second parts. But what made me love this episode more are the additions. Great additions and great work from Kubu and the writers. Especially since the episode has several important events in different locations and separate topics. Therefore, we can divide the episode into four parts, from the most important to the least important. For the first part, the birth of the baby of origin. The part 2, Ichigo's training with Ichibi in his malice and his secret scheme. Part 3, Yu Habach making Yuryu his successor and the secret behind his survival. As for part 4, the Wikomondo events which I consider the least important in this episode. So guys, let's start with the first part. So, what I will say is not spoiler. But I have to explain to you what the studio did at the beginning of this episode. Because I know some, especially those who watched only the anime, will not understand the power of Yuabach, which was mentioned in this page. So the first scenes, although they gave us an overview of how Yuabach was born, but they didn't clearly answer one of the biggest questions. Is Yuabach the son of Ryu? or an embodiment of the power that was torn from him and took a human form. I will do a special video about this point, but it seems to me that they are together. Somehow Ryu put his gametes out and they are formed, like human fetus, until a woman embraced that child and she can be called the mother of Yuabach, and she is now a new factor in the story. I don't know if the fetus Yuabach was inside a mother's womb or was he born outside of it, but apparently this person is his mother and soon as he started making contacts with her she died because of him and that's where you should know how Yuhabach's power works so Yuhabach grows by sharing parts of his soul with others and as soon as someone touches Yuhabach immediately a part of Yuhabach's soul is attached to that person so that part compensates for the deficiency that person suffers from if that person was ill the fragment of Yuhabach's soul attached to him will cure that person's illness whatever his illness whether it is a physical illness or psychological that disease will be removed and the person will return safe of course it's not free in turn all the abilities and knowledge acquired by that person will be combined into that part that you have shared with that person and therefore when he dies that part will return to you loaded with all the knowledge and abilities of the person got when he was alive and this is the main strength of that child the strange thing here is that the death quickly comes to anyone who touches Yuhaba. He might die after some days or months or years. The important thing is that they die in a short time. Therefore, if you notice, as soon as the umbilical cord was attached to Yuhaba's mother, she died. Her death may not be immediate, but in the end she died. It can be said that Yuhaba's mother was the first person to be exposed to his deadly ability because of her death. That child was left alone. He didn't hear, he didn't see, he didn't move, and he didn't scream. He just stayed in his place without moving. And then when people came and touched him, they have noticed those miraculous powers that he had and how he can heal people from their diseases. But they didn't know that by touching Yuhabach, he was sharing with them some parts of his soul and it would return to him loaded with their abilities and knowledge after their death which would make him grow until he became the Yuhabach we know and if you have noticed the young Yuhabach looks the same as the fake Tensa Zangetsu and that's because the fake Zangetsu in the first place is the manifestation of Ichigo's Quincy power so as you can see in this scene all the people began to sanctify that little boy and they called him Yuhabach and then when the child grew up he began to hear that name and he decided to take it for himself and called himself Yuhabach unfortunately we don't have the time of that events I mean when exactly was Yuhabach born and also the new things that made it more mysterious who is the mother of Yuhabach what I personally think Kobo will come back to this topic at a later time, whether in this part or the next parts. 
And with these strong additions, we move to the second part, which is no less important. And it's about Ichigo's training with the monk. I repeat, all the events of Ichibi in Ichigo's training are original content that doesn't exist in the manga. These are events that Kobo wanted to add in the manga, but he couldn't. And the first thing that we can notice, which honestly surprised me, is how big are the castles in which each member of Zero Squad lives. I mean, just notice with me the location of Ichibi's training. It's located in the middle of the mountains. Thus, the castles in which the Zero Squad members live are like large cities and perhaps small countries. And the location of Ichigo's training with Ichibi holds great symbolism. As I said, it's among the mountains, and the nickname given to Ichibi is the monk. And this appears clearly in his appearance, and as you know, the monks of the Buddhism live in the mountains where they worship and other things. So, I like the conversation that took place between Ichigo and Ichibi. Ichigo thought that he has finished his training with Ichibi, Ichigo thought in his imagination that now he knew what his powers are. He has Quincy and Shinigami powers combined with Hollow. His Zanpakutu is fixed and he can release Bankai again. So all what he has to do is return to the Soul Society, fight Yuabach, kick his ass and defeat him. End of the story. Yes, this is what Ichigo thought as he walked with Ichibi towards his rhythm. And Ichibi clearly knew the thoughts of Ichigo, so he deliberately fabricated that conversation and provoked Ichigo by talking about how the Shinigami are weak and they are just weak people who were defeated and couldn't win the battle. Of course, Ichigo didn't like that. That's why he replied, and you were happy by watching it. At least they fought with what they possessed, and you were watching from above and didn't intervene until the war ended. Ichibi didn't deny this, but he replied to Ichigo in a way that indicates a kind of cunning. He said, we are satisfied with watching. This is our job to watch from above. But now we are the ones who train you and raise your strength. Meaning, hadn't been for Zero Squad, your Zanpakuto wouldn't have been repaired or fixed, nor would Byakuya, Rukia and Renji have been saved. And on the top of that, and this is what Ichigo wanted to reach, he said, is that you Ichigo, with all the powers you have now, you can't defeat you, Abach. You need to become more than just a Shinigami. And of course, here I have to explain something according to my assumption, which is when Ichibi said these words to Ichigo, the latter was going to put the two swords on the table. Then either Ichibi or the nature of that room is what created that wooden sword in Ichigo's hand. Because in the manga, there is this page and this page of Ichigo and he's going to take the two swords, which mean Ichigo in that scene of the manga has already finished all his training, including his training that was going to be in this episode. And the sense that Kobo had all those scenes in the anime of Ichigo's wandering with Ichibi in their talk, and his training that he will go through with Ichibi in order to test him, until they reach the first page of chapter 547, which is the beginning of the second invasion in the manga. And Ichibi repeats the same words, Ichigo, we will test you if you can surpass the Shinigami level. This sentence carries with it things that may be scary, guys. What do you mean, Ichibi, more than just a Shinigami? This question, or what Ichibi wants to do, made Kyuraku in the Serechi start to thinking about the true motives behind Ichibi's taking Ichigo with him. Is it true for the sake of Serechi, or it is for something else? This scene also does not exist in the manga. Kyuraku explains how he himself doesn't trust Ichibi in his intentions, as if Kyuraku knew that Ichibi might do something to Ichigo, so he decided to go to Ichigo's friends. Then we come to the third part, Yuhabach making Yuryu his successor. Honestly, the scenes of the presentation of the Stern Writer are one of the best scenes in this episode, especially with the new host, and the standing of the elite guard with Harshfeld's side was very impressive and confirms, as I said in a previous video, that the elite guard are subordinate to Yu Habach personally and the rest of the generator are under the leadership of Hashfeld. So Yu Habach began his speech by reminding the generator of the defeat suffered by the Quincy a thousand years ago and how they had to hide in the shadows. And by the way, I like this shot from the ending, which gives more symbolism to what the generator have been living for a thousand years, hiding in the shadows and how they are now preparing for the next battle. 
As for presenting Yuryu as his successor, the student writer did not like it, and it was a shock to some of them, especially Busby, and the scene of his exchange of looks between him and Hajvald was among the distinctive things in those scenes, and some wanted to vent their anger through different means, like what Bambita did. Another thing that was also important, it is Yuryu and Yuhabach's talk about why Yuhabach chose him over others. Yuhabach tells Yuryu that the, the reason he was chosen is because he is the last survivor of the Quincy's. He is the one who survived that sacred ritual, the Auswern, that happened in the flashback of Ishin, where Ichigo's mother and Yuryu's mother died. Yuryu was supposed to die, being not a pure Quincy, but for some reason he survived. What is new here, which wasn't in the manga, is that Yuryu mentioned that he knew the reason, and the reason is found in his grandfather's diary. So Saw so can seem to know why Yuryu survived, and I had talked about this in a previous discussion, and I said maybe Saw so did something to make Yuryu survive that incident. It seems that something like this happened, or at least Soki knows why Yuryu survived. And perhaps also Soki left what Yuryu should do in that case. So I guess the answer of this question will be revealed gradually as we progress in the events that has something to do with Yuryu. Then we come to the fourth and the final part, which is about the Wikomondo. Frankly, there is no much to talk about it than the experience that Kiski is doing about the medal. And the episode ends with the beginning of the second invasion. The Van Reich turned the Serechi into their homes, and they made the Sky Raid warning that the war this time will be more cruel than the first time. So guys, this episode I give it 10 of 10, it was the best, it was amazing from everything. What about you tell me your opinions in the comments, and see you guys in my next video.